Well, hello everybody, and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make black bun. Now this is a, a Scottish bake, and it's basically a pastry in a loaf tin, which is then filled with uh, a fruit cake, and then a, a, a pastry top is put on, and it's baked in the oven. And this is a, a, a loaf cake in the pastry, which the Scottish people enjoy at Hogmanay, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Um, they celebrate New Year much more in Scotland, I think, than we do in, in England. Um, but I thought I would give this a go. And it's the sort of cake that you can make now, and it would be good for New Year's Eve, but you can actually also make it after Christmas, ready for New Year's Eve if you want to. So it's not a difficult recipe, but it does take a while. It's gonna bake for at least two hours. So I'll go on to the ingredients and for the pastry I have uh, 300 grams which is two cups based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup of plain flour. I'm going to use one beaten egg to brush over the pastry later on. I have 75 grams of uh, cold butter and 75 grams of cold lard. That's five tablespoons and one teaspoon of each. I have uh, two grams, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and I have uh, a pinch of salt. That's all I need for the pastry. And then for the, the cake to go inside the pastry, I have 200 grams, one and a third cups, again, based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup of plain flour. I have 600 grams, about four and a quarter cups, of a, com a combination of sultanas, raisins and currants. Any combination you want. And you could use some other dried fruits, but the dark fruits are the good ones because it's called black bun. Then I have 100 grams, three quarters of a cup of chopped mixed peel, citron. I have uh, 100 grams, half a cup of dark brown muscovado sugar but dark brown sugar is fine and if you don't have that light brown sugar would work just as well. I have 30 millilitres which is two tablespoons of brandy. You can use whiskey which would make it perhaps slightly more authentic being from Scotland but I'm using brandy and you don't have to use alcohol you could substitute uh, extra milk or water or orange juice for the brandy. I have 45 millilitres, which is three tablespoons of milk. I have uh, one and a half grams, which is half a teaspoon each of cinnamon, ginger, allspice and mixed spice. I have two grams, half a teaspoon of baking soda and one gram, a quarter of a teaspoon of white pepper. I also have one uh, medium egg uh, and that would be large in the USA. So that's the ingredients for the cake filling, that's the ingredients for the pastry. So I'm going to go on to make the pastry first of all. So I'm going to make the pastry in the bowl of my immersion blender um, and I've also got some cold water ready to add into the the pastry dough to make it bind together. So I start off by putting my flour, baking powder and salt into the, the bowl. And I'm just going to give that a quick stir around just a little bit. That will help to get the baking powder and the salt mixed through the flour. That's good enough. And then I'm going to add in the lard and the cold butter. And I'm going to process that until it's coming together. Uh, it's sort of fine breadcrumbs, but it, will, it might begin to clump together. And as it does, I'm going to add in my uh, water until it, just enough of it until it all clumps together. And so that has mixed together quite nicely and I'm going to add in 
about three tablespoons of water and then I'll if I need another tablespoon I'll add that in later and that's beginning to clump but I'm just going to add in another tablespoon of water So that's clumping together quite nicely now as you can see. So I'm going to put that onto some plastic wrap and form it into a ball. So I'm just going to squeeze that into a dough basically and form it into a disc. like that and I'm going to just wrap that up and put it in the fridge and I'm going to chill that for about 30 minutes and as it chills I'm going to preheat my oven to 180 degrees Celsius, 160 Celsius with a fan, 350 Fahrenheit and I will line a two pound loaf tin with some parchment paper having greased the tin first. So with the oven preheating what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my flour and my spices and baking soda into a large bowl. I'll just stir those around. Then I'm going to add in all the other ingredients and mix those together. So that's the dark brown muscovado sugar. And I'll just bash that around a little bit to break it up and so with that sugar broken up quite nicely there's still a couple of little lumps but it doesn't matter they will dissolve during the baking I'm going to add in the remaining ingredients so the mixed peel and the fruits. I'll just give those a stir around as well. And then I'll add the wet ingredients, so that's the milk, the brandy and the medium egg. And I'm going to stir those together just to get them all combined. And that's mixed together quite nicely and it's uh, not particularly wet, there's, there's no uh, fat or butter or, or such like or oil in uh, the cake mix and I'm going to set that to one side while we deal with the pastry. So I've taken two thirds of my pastry and I'm going to roll that out into a rectangle which I can use to line my two pound loaf tin. And that's the size of my loaf tin there. And I think that's just about good enough. So I'm going to pick that up and put it into my tin. And the way I'm going to try to do that, he says, hopefully, is to turn it over onto another slightly smaller tin and see if I can just put that in and then turn it back. 
you can do it any way you want and you can patch it it doesn't matter but I think this should help quite a bit and then just drop that down and that's um, reasonably well lined I've patched it up a little bit and but that's fine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spoon my mixture in and I'm going to level that off and then I'll just set that to a, one side while we roll out the remaining pastry to cover the top and so I, I'm just going to roll this out so that it's large enough to cover the top and I can crimp around the edge a little bit. Now if you want to you can cut off the excess and make a pattern to go on the top with some decoration if you want to. So I'm just going to pick that up and lay it over the top. like that and just to be on the safe side I'm going to take my beaten egg and brush around the side of the pastry so that I can crimp that together nicely I'm going to press it down all the way round just like that and then I'm going to cut off the excess And I'm simply going to take a fork and crimp the edge. And then I'm going to brush over the top with my beaten egg. And then I've just cut out a little bit of a pattern with some of the pastry which I'm going to stick on the top and brush that as well and I'm going to put that into the oven and I'm going to bake it for two hours and after two hours it should be cooked all the way through I'll test it with a skewer to see what, what it looks like. Then I'll take it out of the oven and I'm going to leave it in the tin until it's cooled completely. And once it's cooled completely, I'll take it out of the tin and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I baked the black bun or the Scottish black bun for two hours. Then I took it out of the oven and left it in the loaf pan for as long as it took to cool completely. Then I transferred it from the loaf pan onto a board and I've now cut it and I'll show you what it looks like inside. So this is it um, cut up and it, it's the cake part is baked very nicely it's sliced nicely um, and I put some butter on a piece which is probably how I would eat it 
but I don't know how the Scots actually eat it. Maybe they dunk it in their whiskey, I don't know. Uh, but I'll just have a taste of uh, this piece without the butter on. Lovely and fruity and spicy. I get the little hit from the alcohol as well. Um, the edge of the pepper comes through uh, with the spices. Very, very nice. Uh, it's a nice variation. I'd never even heard of it until recently. And I should say that I've based this closely on a recipe I saw on BBC Food website. So, that's going to be it for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there will be an I that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe. And I put a link below the video as well. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.